right, hello, be smart people. So people are dying because their vitamin D levels are low. Let's say, what's a better way to say it? People are dying because they're not going out in the sunlight. People are sick because they're not getting exposed to sun. People are dying because their vitamin D levels are low. We are staying inside every day in our houses, in our offices, and in our cars, and we're not getting the sunlight that we need. Vitamin D is actually not a vitamin. It's actually a hormone that your skin makes when it's exposed to sunlight. Most experts estimate that 80% of African Americans, 70% of Hispanics, and 60% of Caucasian Americans are low in vitamin D. Now, why is this important? Why do we even care if your vitamin D is low? Because there are severe and serious life-threatening, deadly consequences of low vitamin D and your doctor is not talking to you about it. Number one, fractures. People who have low vitamin D are not able to absorb calcium uh, into their, from their intestines and build up strong, healthy bone. So they're more prone to falls and fractures. I want you to imagine this picture, and it's oversimplifying a very complex process, but it applies nonetheless. All right, so uh, calcium can be viewed as bricks. Vitamin D can be viewed as construction workers, okay? So if you have bricks at the building site, but you don't have the construction workers to build a house, is the house gonna get built? No. It doesn't matter how much calcium you have, if you don't have the vitamin D to bring the bricks to the site and build a house, your bones will not be healthy. Vitamin D is that key ingredient that helps calcium get into your bones and make your bones strong. The other thing that vitamin D is crucially important for is um, pregnant women. Did you know that women with low vitamin D are more prone to have premature babies? Do you know that women with low vitamin D have babies that have low birth weight. Did you know that if your vitamin D level is low, you have an increased risk of getting a cesarean section rather than giving birth to your baby naturally? Number two, hypertension. Did you know that exposure to sunlight lowers your blood pressure? If it's extremely high, it can lower your blood pressure by as much as 40 points. And we all know that hypertension is one of those things that lead to other serious consequences like heart attacks, like kidney failure, going on dialysis. So go out and get your sunlight. Uh, as mentioned, increased vitamin D actually helps improve your heart health. It makes your heart beat stronger. It uh, decreases inflammation in your body. All right, so the other thing vitamin D is good for, it lowers your blood sugar. Vitamin D lowers your blood sugar. Vitamin D, which your skin makes from sun, lowers your blood sugar. So what should I do if I'm diabetic? Go out into the sunlight every day and your vitamin D will, your vitamin D levels will rise and your blood sugar will come under control if you do the other things that help diabetes, such as eating a healthy diet and exercising. The other thing that vitamin D is important is for improving the health of your gums. People with low vitamin D levels are prone to what's called periodontal disease, which means their gums will bleed, their teeth are not healthy, and their teeth are weak. So if you want your teeth to be healthy and your gums especially to be healthy, um, you will go out into the sun and get some sunlight. Uh, the other thing that vitamin D is important for is decreasing rates of infection. The first thing that was discovered about vitamin D back in the late 1800s was vitamin D is antibacterial. Specifically, sunlight is antibacterial. So vitamin D also decreases your risk of getting certain cancers. If you have the appropriate amount of vitamin D in your bloodstream, you have lower rates of prostate cancer, lower rates of colon cancer and other digestive tract cancers. There are lower rates of breast cancer. Vitamin D has a very strong association with low rates of cancer. So there's another very important consequence of low vitamin D. Vitamin D is associated with autoimmune disorders. So that's low vitamin D is associated with autoimmune disorders. Those are disorders where your body kind of attacks itself. One of these autoimmune disorders is a disease called multiple sclerosis, which can have a lot of devastating consequences to the person who gets this disease. People who are born 
close to the equator, let's say in the Caribbean, and Florida actually is relatively close to the equator, have much lower rates of multiple sclerosis than people who are born far away from the equator, let's say in New York or Massachusetts. And the one thing researchers noted that if you were born close to the equator, let's say you were born in Florida, and you stay there until the age of 10, it doesn't matter where you move. You can move to Michigan, Massachusetts, your rates of, multiple, of acquiring multiple sclerosis will be just as low as if you never moved from Florida. So that means getting that vitamin D level early in life is very important. So parents, let your kids go outside and play and stop playing those video games. Another consequence of vitamin D deficiency is increased rates of depression, anxiety, and a condition called seasonal affective disorder, which is depression when the days are short and the days are cold, especially out north. Uh, another condition called schizophrenia, where there's a break from reality. Um, people do not think correctly. Uh, people hear voices. Um, this condition often develops when people are young. Uh, people who have appropriate amounts of vitamin D, appropriate exposure to sunlight, have lower rates of schizophrenia. So look at this. I just listed a host of disorders that can improve with vitamin D exposure. The reason why we don't do it is physicians don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. It's free. It takes little effort to go outside. So what's an appropriate level of vitamin D? Well, the number that you're looking for is a number more than 30. This is what the physicians and the scientists will say. For a level higher than 30, you're able to absorb the calcium from your gut into your bloodstream. But if you want to have optimal health, the vitamin D experts actually recommend that your levels be higher than 40. Now remember, most African Americans have insufficient or deficient vitamin D. So who should be tested? If you're dark-skinned and African-American, you should definitely be tested for vitamin D. Chances are you're low. Um, if you're elderly, you're not able to absorb vitamin D. Uh, I'm calcium through the gut as well um, and store your vitamin D as well. So you should get your vitamin D levels checked. Um, if you have kidney disease, chronic kidney disease, you should get your vitamin D checked. If you're overweight, especially obese, you should get your vitamin D checked. So if you checked off any or much of those areas, you should get your vitamin D checked and your level should be at a minimum higher than 30, optimally higher than 40. So this vitamin D test tends to be expensive even with insurance. So what would I do or what should you do if you cannot afford the test or even if you can't afford the test, assume that you're low and go out into the sunlight and get the vitamin D that you need. Now, when you start out going out into the sun, start with gradual, moderate exposure. Now, we've all heard about the detrimental effects of sunlight. Sunlight can cause skin cancers, such as basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and the one we all are concerned about because it can turn out to be deadly, melanoma. Did you know that people who have higher levels of vitamin D actually have lower rates of melanoma? And that when you go out into the sun and you haven't been out into the sun for a while, you tend to get sunburned. And that sunburn is what predisposes to skin cancers. So that's why we say when you start out, maybe start out with five minutes at a time, then work your way up to 10 minutes a day, then up to 20 minutes a day. And then depending on the color of your skin, you may either have to go much longer or shorter. For example, a fair-skinned, red-headed person may get by with five to 10 minutes of sunlight a day, early in the morning. A dark-skinned, very dark-skinned person like me may need to go out into the sun for two hours during the middle of the day to get that intensity. We'll talk more about this later, um, but we wanna tell you now about an app called D-Minder. That's D-M-I-N-D-E-R, where if you put in your skin type, and you put in where you live, it will tell you the amount of sun that you need for that particular day to build up your vitamin D levels. All right, be smart people. Now listen, although sunburn is a risk factor for skin cancer, this is most important. Fast foods, 
Fried foods and sugary foods, these are processed foods. These foods play the leading role in the aging process and in the development of skin cancer. So the proper way to get exposure to sunlight is gradual, moderate exposure. Repeat that everyone, gradual, moderate exposure. And eating foods that are high in phytonutrients. What are phytonutrients? Nutrients that are found only in plants that are powerful anti-cancer agents and immune boosting agents. If you eat fast food, fried foods, and sugary foods, and don't practice sensible sun exposure, you're more likely to get skin cancer. Now, if you eat lots of fruits and veggies and practice sensible sun exposure, you're much less likely to get skin cancer, prostate cancer, and colon cancer. All right, so remember, the darker you are, the more time you have to spend in the sun to get the same amount of vitamin D. For example, I am dark brown, Someone who is light brown would have to spend less time in the sun than I would to get the same amount of vitamin D. Using the D-Minder app, both participants went into the sun for 60 minutes. Now look at Grace. She generated 7,500 international units of vitamin D. Look at me. I only generated 2,200 international units of vitamin D during the same time. The other thing is if you're overweight, you actually have to spend more time in the sun to get more vitamin D so that you can get that in your bloodstream. Okay, so this is very important. Vitamin D is not available all day long. It's only available during certain parts of the day. Typically, it's available between the hours of 10 and 3, but this varies widely depending on how close you live to the equator. That is, how close you live in a sunny climate. So it's less available the further away you get uh, from the equator, and it's more available the closer you get to the equator. Download the app. It will tell you when vitamin D is available based on where you live. So I'm going to tell you a story. So I work with a person um, in the emergency department whose blood pressure was 200 over 110. And she started to go out in the sunlight, and her blood pressure after only two weeks is down to 150 over 90 on the same blood pressure medication she'd been taking that had not been as effective. So this is really important that whatever you do that is healthy, that you do it every day. If you have high blood pressure, aren't you supposed to take your medication every day? And since we have shown that sunshine is actually a blood pressure medication, it's actually a diabetes medication, you should go out every day and get a reasonable amount of sunlight for your skin tone. One more thing, when your eyes are exposed to sunlight, you make more melatonin and melatonin helps you sleep better. So it's interesting, we as Christians need the sun, S-O-N, every day. We need to wake up every day and spend some time with them. Isn't it interesting that we also need the sun, S-U-N, every day? So go out there and get some sunlight. And remember, be smart people, Ecclesiastes 11.7. Light is sweet and it pleases the eyes to see the sun. So please, be smart people, go outside and get some sunlight. I used